I'm trying to do the impossible. It's not completely impossible, but it is most of the time seemingly impossible to find a really beautiful photography composition in the middle of a very busy forest. So what I'm looking for is a foreground that's smooth, not textured, not distracting, and some space between the trees. And then I think I want kind of one prominent tree that I'll put on the one third line. So I'm looking and trying to do the impossible. So one little trick that I just love to do, and it works so well, it's to take your phone out and start looking around through the screen on your phone. It's a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, which is kind of the same aspect ratio as a YouTube video. And it seeing things through the eye of this screen just really helps to help you find an amazing composition. It certainly helps me. It's a great little trick. So I'm just looking around. I love the vertical trees. But the trees that are on an angle that are kind of half fallen over, they kind of ruin the shot. So I'm looking for something that doesn't have one of those angled trees. I like this. And I am going to shoot a pano of this. This looks great. So let's work on that. Yeah, I like that a lot. That looks really good. So I think that this is kind of a prime candidate for a pano. And obviously we need the tripod for that. And uh, for any kind of panels, I like to use the L bracket on my camera and put it up in portrait mode so I can get a little more height in the pano. Awkward. It's surprising actually how deep this snow is. So the legs of the tripod are just punching right through. I think the tripod legs actually need their own little snowshoes. There seems to be about uh, three feet of snow on the ground here. Not much better, it's such dry snow. I think I am ready. I found a foreground I kind of like is just smooth snow with nothing sticking up out of the foreground. In other words, no distractions. And I've got the manual, I've got the camera set in manual. Everything is locked down, manual focus, manual shutter speed, manual ISO, manual aperture, and a daylight white balance so nothing can be adjusted. First photo has been taken, and a rotation for number two, number three. My shutter speed here is uh, one thirtieth of a second, so I don't have to be overly concerned about vibration, although I should wait probably two seconds since the last time I've touched it. And we've got our first pano in the can. So I think um, as a variation on this one, I'm going to set up the tripod at uh, stand-up height. So I'm looking down on the snow just a little bit more, and it may make for a little more interesting photo. We'll see. And the tripod is at full height, ready for pano number two. And I have a feeling this one will look a little bit better because there isn't quite so much foreground in the shot. The only thing that I'm battling against here is the fact that there is some sun shining on the left side of the frame out on that frozen lake that's out to the left and I don't think that uh, there's going to be a balance left to right in terms of lightness but we'll see. I think it's going to be a great little photo. I love these kind of real wintry scenes and I'm uh, actually shooting way more than I need in case uh, there's one part of the panel that looks better than the other part of the panel. And then just for safety, let's flip the camera into landscape mode. 
Oh, that looks really good. I actually really love this. And um, let's just get a safety shot. Just look for, there's my prominent tree. Ah, it's a little heavy on the right. Um, yeah, one other thing that I really have to watch for when we're shooting vertical trees, the camera needs to be exactly shooting horizontal. Like the barrel of the lens needs to be dead flat. If it's slightly down or slightly up, then the trees will start coming together or going apart because you've got these vertical lines. So you've got to make sure when you're shooting wide angle that your camera is truly horizontal, which it now is, and photo taken. We'll see how that one looks. There's my safety. So before I leave here, I just want to get as many as possible of just different compositions. And since right now I'm shooting directly into the sun, I'm bracketing these ones so I don't have completely blown out highlights. And I love these winter scenes. I mean, if there's one thing I really love in photography, it's the way that the snow kind of smooths over all the noise and all the clutter that's normally here in the spring, summer, and fall, and just gives you these amazing smooth foregrounds and the snow that's hanging on the trees. It just looks so incredible. And you really have to time it right. Like you have to be watching for the snow events so that you can get to a place like this the morning after it snows while the snow is still up on the trees. I love it so much. So we have a really limited window of time where the sun has just peeked out through a small hole in the cloud and there's one tree growing up out of the snow in the middle of the open area. So I want to get out there quickly while there's still some sun. I know there are still a hundred compositions in here of little close-ups of interesting things, but I really want to catch that sun. So I'm heading back out there and this is busy. This is a busy fest in here. It's really difficult to find clean compositions of just one thing, one main subject, one hero of the story. So let's go. I'm back out in the sun and I see one dead tree over there sticking up. The sun's not hitting it right now. It might work, it might not. Gotta give it a try, you never know. Unless you try. Even though it's difficult to walk through all of this snow right now, it's deep, it takes effort, and frankly, I don't exactly feel like walking all the way over here. Woo! Two final compositions. First one are these uh, cute little Christmas trees poking up right here. I'm gonna grab them, them and um, I don't need the tripod for that because my shutter speed is fast enough. And then the last one is right over there. It's a dead tree. It's about 15, 18 feet high. And uh, if the sun were to hit that, I think it would be quite an interesting shot. If I can find a good background for it, that is. Otherwise, it's just going to be more clutter and it won't look good. So let's get this one done. Autofocus, move the focus point onto the tree and bam. Check the histogram. Always check the histogram. Really, really cool photo. Definitely more interesting than the ones that were inside the bush in the forest. These look really good. I, I'm really excited about these.
So I got my photo of the little tree sticking up and then another one of the dead tree sticking up with uh, the sun behind it. I'd love to hear what you have to say of which one is your favorite photo from this photo shoot. Is it photo number one or photo number two or photo number three? Leave a comment below and let me know which one is your favorite. And in addition, if you ever find yourself in a place like this, the middle of nowhere, it's a photography shoot, and you want to make sure you don't forget an essential piece of gear, which is one of my worst fears as a landscape photographer, I'd love to give you a new product that I've created, and it's called the Ultimate Equipment Checklist. And I'm giving it away for free if you register and watch my landscape photography webinar. I give it away during the webinar. I also give you my new book, Landscape Photography Secrets, as well as another checklist called the camera settings checklist. You get all three things. So click the link in the description and I'll see you inside the webinar. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next adventure.